I need to get down here right away. There's been a murder. What? Detective, this is my daughter. Wow, I had you pay the sisters. You're both no stranger to television. I'm Miss Thompson, Miss Farber. T tell me a little bit about what uh, drew you to the Spencer sisters. Uh, I um I was offered the script and uh which is a lovely thing to not have to audition and I just thought it was really funny and I loved the character it seemed like a lot of fun to play and um uh, women of my age usually get really lame I get offered really lame parts a lot um that that aren't interesting or funny and uh, I really loved this character and I also know that mysteries are really popular with people because I did these Jane Doe mysteries for the Hallmark Channel many years ago, and they're still playing them like all day long, all day long. People would just watch them and they love them. So I thought the combination was great. You know, it was a, a, an opportunity to make a show that that could be a hit and play for a while, which is, you know, the, a dream of all of our, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. To just not have to audition and have a safe place and have a family <laughs> to work with for a minute. For a minute. Yeah. yeah. Ms. Barber, what about you? Oh, me. Um, I I loved, I read, when I read the first um, episode's script, I thought it was very funny. And I loved that this was a procedural with the a new case every week and the whole detective agency thing, but also comedic and light and bright and the exploration of the relationship between a mother and daughter working together and living together and not getting along always. Um, I thought that would be really interesting and fun to play. Boy, that was a good answer. Thanks. It took me a while to find it, but oh, I did. Good. Ms. Thompson, I, you know, you've, you, you've morphed into directing and what's that been like uh, for you to go behind the camera as well? Um, I really love it. I mean, and, and the reason I really started directing was because I could, couldn't get any good parts like Victoria and the Spencer sisters. So um, I and instead of doing a really awful part, I thought it'd be better to go behind the camera and be the boss. And um, I found I found I'm, I'm very good at it. I'm a very good director. Um, and a lot of people are mad that I'm acting <laughs> because I can't I'm not available to direct. Um, so oh, that's God. nice. I like that. Um, and I, I like, I like the creative puzzle solving of, of directing. It's a lot of work, but it's uh, very rewarding and I enjoy it. And I, you know, don't have to have hair and makeup and someone poking at you all the time. There's someone always poking at you when you're an actor. It drives you crazy. I remember seeing Howard the Duck. I loved it as a kid. Uh, have you called up Marvel and said, hey, can we reboot this guy? I mean, he, he's already come back. He's in the MCU now. I have. I have had a meeting at Marvel because I wanted to, and I wanted to oh, really? direct a, a different kind of Howard the Duck movie, which is why I did, um, I don't know if you ever saw it, but this great show on the CW called Stargirl, which was had all kinds of visual effects and fights and, you know, a lot of marvel -y kind of stuff, special effects. And I did... Uh, Star Trek Picard to get that whole thing. Like, yes, I could handle a $10 million episode. You know, I could handle a big budget. So I've done all those things. <laughs> I've pitched to Marvel. All the fans want it, but they haven't called yet. They haven't called me back. They said, we'll remember this, but we have plans long out for oh, things. I'm sure. Yeah. They have like the next 50 years like, right. figured out. Right. Until they sell the studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kevin's got a big blueprint on his uh, in his office. Miss Farber, uh, it says Leah Thompson yeah. will direct Howard the Duck. Yeah, for sure. Miss <laughs> Farber, I did want to ask you about Degrassi and and what I mean. Geez, I mean, think of the generations of kids that watch that show. Uh, mm -hmm. It's incredible. Why do you think Degrassi um, appealed to so many different generations of children over the years? I think oh, there's a bunch of reasons. One is that it wasn't slick or um, or glossy. We weren't, some of us had had agents, at least for our generation. I think everyone was in the union and had an agent, but we hadn't worked much. So we were pretty green and that um, made for an awkwardness that was real feeling. And um, we looked like, 
real kids because we were, we played pretty much our own ages. And so we grew up on the show, which is different from a lot of American like soaps and stuff where it's older actors playing younger and they have like gorgeous hair and makeup and uh, it, it's a whole other false thing. Um, so there's that. And then, uh, yeah, I, those, those are the main reasons I think why it was so popular. And they dealt, the episodes dealt with issues in a very real way. Like we've heard from so many fans over the years and from kids who are still discovering it. And uh, they, they really connected with the tougher storylines that we handled. It, it landed for them. And also we didn't have social media on our generation as actors or characters. So there, I don't even think we had cell phones in the episode. So if kids today are loving it, then um, maybe it has to do with that too. A nostalgia for a time that they didn't even experience. Yeah, that's wild. I didn't even think of that. Uh, yeah. Ms. Thompson, before I let you go, I got to ask one back to future question. I feel like you probably answered them all over the years, but my grandma took us to see the first one. It's one of my favorite cinema theater going memories in my life. Uh, back to Future 2, which prediction um, are you most surprised came true? I'm so bad at all that. I, 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 I'd say I could probably say I knew that flying cars weren't going to really be popular when they made the movie. I'm like, nobody really wants to fly their car. Everyone's kind of scared to leave the ground. Um, I don't know. I think maybe the TV on TV thing, that, that was smart. That the, the picture and picture and picture. Everyone was like, that'll never happen. And that was, that's how we live now. So has the publisher seen the reviews yet? You leave that to me. Focus on your big day. Okay? Okay. Okay. Oh, there you are. I was beginning to think that we had a gas leak. Don't give me any ideas. It's a little early for booze, don't you think, Mom? Even for you? It's not booze if it's paired with orange juice. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs>